one of the pleasures of a good old-fashioned snowstorm, if you like that kind of thing, is often the next day, when snowy low pressure gives way to a sunny high. We came to visit Suzanne Heward in the countryside around Dover, New Hampshire, who is happy to let the sun energize the install of both a photovoltaic electric generating solar system, as well as a thermal system to heat water. There's a small army uh, around the house and on the house and, uh, and down in the bowels of the house. The photovoltaic arrays that are going up there, they're going, they're tied into the electric grid and they're going to be uh, generating power. So the fuel for that power plant that's going up on our roof is just right outside the, uh, right outside where we're sitting right now. You know, we've got a little power plant and the storage for the power that we're producing is the grid itself. So we have uh, two groups of guys up on the roof. Both are focusing on the photovoltaic side of the installation. Um, luckily we have two roofs to work on. With photovoltaic energy, or PV, large silicon wafers convert the sun's energy into direct current, or DC electricity. The DC flows through an inverter, which converts the electricity to the AC, or alternating current, used in homes. How's it going up there? Pretty good. Pretty sunny. What's happening? We are throwing down the feet which get lagged right into the structural members of the roof. Yeah. We're working on putting rail attaching to those feet, and then the last step is going to be putting these modules up on the rail. Why is really a long time dream to become more energy self-sufficient? Why this particular moment? Um, uh, there are tax credits available, uh, rebates from the states, some from the feds. It's a practical approach, uh, even. Smart. And not, not just an altruistic one. So doing good can also save real money. The grid goes two ways. In electricity you generate when the sun's out, your lights are off, and appliance use is typically low, can make your electrical meter run backwards, your surplus energy feeding the grid. You can then draw off the credit at night or when it's stormy and dark. It's using the grid to save your power for when you need it most. But wait, there's more. Over on another roof, Suzanne's engaged a system that uses the sun to heat water and save even more yeah, money. Uh, that is a 40 tube evacuated um, solar hot water system. Uh, and the way that works is each individual tube um, collects the sun's energy, converts it into heat, um, where it heats a fluid that transfers heat to a tank. But that's gonna generate most of the hot water that they're gonna use. So we'll get, what do we got here? What's it, what? We have a... An 80 gallon electric water heater that also has an internal coil in the bottom of the tank. We have here the solar pump station. It has a circuit. The hot water system will pay itself back in, it was a reasonably small number of years. I can't remember whether it's four or five, but with all of the rebates, it was really quite. Uh, amazing. We all love what we do. Um, the cool thing is that yes it's cold, yes it's winter time, yes it can be a little windy, but we're working on the southern part of the building, so we're working in the sun. As a matter of fact, if you go inside and take a look at the temperature of the solar hot water collectors, they're well up in the 80s, 90s, and it's January. One of the exciting things for us is not just the technology excitement of generating power, but what it means and the fact that it is helping us reduce, you know, our own carbon footprint, the amount of emissions that we're spewing, you know, will be reduced by the cleaner power that we're generating. And those are very exciting things. And in the end, Suzanne's power feeds all of us. The trickle of electricity from sunshine, the warmer water solar provides, like a bit of summer sunshine in the middle of winter. I love it. I love my job.